Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Amshir, and today the gospel is from John chapter 6. And during this month of Amshir, the church is preparing us uh, for the great Lent. And as we are about to go without physical food, the church is reminding us about the spiritual food. And that's why this month we've read the Gospels of this month have been all from John chapter 6, which is about the spiritual food, the bread of life. And today I want to speak to you about how, if you, like, if you look at the readings of today, all the readings today are about belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see many different types of people who followed the Lord. Many different types of people who followed the Lord. So today I wanted to look and see about some of those believers of Christ. How we could characterize some of the believers who followed Christ. Some people, the first type, is some people followed Christ merely for their physical benefit. Like those who ate the bread and, and the, the fish and the five loaves and the miracle of the, of the feeding of the multitude. And they were following the Lord because they were so eager to just have more food. Because they were so hungry. So they were following the Lord just to have someone that would supply them with, with some food. And the Lord Jesus Christ, He rebukes these type of people. He said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. And here I want to discuss with you the concept which I think is very prevalent in our society, and that's the concept of the, the vending machine God. The idea that we go to God, we put in our dollar bill, we put in our fasting, our little prayers, and out we want to come our Pringles or some grace or some peace or some blessing. And, and it's like a quick fix to our problems. But really that's not the way the Lord wants us to be. The Lord isn't a vending machine that we go to. When the Lord told the crowd today, He said, He was the bread of God who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The people were so excited. They were like, yes, we need this bread now. And give us this bread all the time. And actually the Samaritan woman did the same thing. When the Samaritan woman saw the Lord and the Lord told her, I am the living water, the Samaritan woman said, Sir, please give me some of this water so that I don't have to come here anymore. It's like she just wanted a quick fix for her problems. She just wanted something that would make her life much easier. And I believe that this is one of the biggest mistakes that we'll have, is if we go to God and treat Him like a vending machine, then we'll be like the Israelites of the Old Testament. The problem with the Israelites of the Old Testament, they treated God like the vending machine. That's why Moses delivered them out of Egypt with great miracles. And shortly after Moses leaves them, they feel hungry, thirsty, so they tell Aaron, please Aaron, can you make a calf for us? Because they were so used to using God as a vending machine. And when their, their chips ran out, they needed more chips. So they found any other means, any other God that would replace him. We will do the same thing. If we treat God like a vending machine, we don't have a, a lasting relationship with Him. And that's why we, we just go there in times of very dis, like, big trouble. And, and when we feel lots of pain, we'll just turn to God very quickly, but then we'll turn away. And there's no root in that type of relationship. St. Augustine says, Many people seek Jesus for no other objective than to get some kind of temporal benefit. One has a business that has run into problems. And then he seeks the intercession of clergy. Another is oppressed by someone more powerful than himself. And he flies to the church. And another desires interve intervention with someone whom he has little influence. I've seen many who in their trials and tribulations, they'll run to the church that's very good. But then when God solves their problems, then 
They forget about the vows or the, the commitments that they've made with God. It's as if God is the dispensary. I was thinking about like in the Old Testament when Joseph had a collection of bread. Many people from all across the world would come to Joseph to get bread. But then they would take that bread and then go leave and leave Egypt, and they would be fine. But the idea is now in the New Testament, we don't come to just take communion and just leave. And No, actually we come to partake and have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not coming for the bread. We come to meet the Lord, the source of the, like, the, source of the bread. I think there's a nice verse in the Pauline epistle today that was troubling me up a lot, but I think once you understand it in this concept, it makes a lot of sense. It says, For this is the one, for Christ has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Christ is more glorious than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. He who built the house has more honor than the house. The idea being is that the Lord Jesus Christ is the source. So you should go to the source and not just go to the, what gives you satisfaction temporarily. You should go to Jesus Christ, the source. Another type of follower, so the first type is the, the vending machine, the one who wants the quick fix and is looking for physical comfort in their relationship with Christ. Another type of follower that I think is present in this gospel is the herd follower. The herd, like a group of sheep and they just follow the herd. No idea where they're going. They just follow for the sake of following. And maybe the herd follower in our concepts is someone who believes in Jesus because their parents, their friends, their community. And I think many of us, we fall into this, this category because we're born into the faith and maybe we haven't really thought critically about who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And the crowd in the story of today, they, were, they had the right pedigree. They were Jews. They were actually coming to the Lord. They asked Him a good question. And they were asking Him, what should we do that we may work the works of God? But the problem is they didn't absorb the answers that the Lord was giving into their hearts. The herd follower is like uh, what I would call a nominal Christian. Or the Christian, just Christian by name. A nominal Christian believes that God exists. A nominal Christian believes God exists. That maybe Jesus died on the cross. That He rose from the dead and did all those things that he's triune. But if you ask this Christian, if you ask this person, if you didn't believe in God, would your life be any different? Would your life be any different if you didn't believe in God? I think this person, if they answered honestly, they would say maybe, no, my life would not be any different. This group of believers, I'm going to call them, you know, we call them the herd Christians, I was thinking of another name, it's sort of paradoxical. I think we could call them the Christian atheist, actually. The Christian atheist. It's a little bit of a paradox, but they're the type that believe in God, but actually, God doesn't actually mean anything to them. And they live their life very normal. St. James says, You believe that there is one God, you do well. This is what St. James says. You believe in one God, you do well. Good job that you believe in one God. But he said, even the demons believe and they tremble. Even the demons believe and tremble. The Christian atheist, some characteristics of the Christian atheist, looking for a sign, looking for a sign. God, reveal yourself. I will, I, I'll believe once I see a sign. Actually, this is what the people, they said in the gospel of today. They said, therefore, they said to him, what sign will you perform that we may see and believe you? What sign will you perform after you perform the sign? Then I'll believe you. Or what work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written, and he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they were looking for a sign. Those who were looking for a sign, as we, we just finished the fast of Jonah, no sign will be given to them. Except, and then the Lord showed them his resurrection. If, you can't, if that sign's not good enough for you, then God be with you. 
The second, maybe characteristic of a Christian atheist is someone that is lacking in their prayer life. Lacking in their prayer life. What the psalmist, he says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Those who are living without an active prayer life, then they are not in relationship with God. Not living in relationship with God. And so it would be very difficult for you to have a, you know, to be a true Christian without a prayer life. That's why it's very important that each Christian has a prayer life. Has, reads the Agbeya, follows the Psalms. It's a very part, like that's part of the spiritual canon of the church. That everyone has an active prayer life. Another sign of an atheistic Christian is one who is ignorant of scriptures or one who doesn't have a relationship with the Bible. As you know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The scriptures are, are bread. That's why when I often tell people about the Bible, we say, and I ask them, do you, do you eat every day? Do you? Do you eat every day? Some of you don't eat. Do you eat every day? Of course you eat every day. If you eat every day physical food, you should eat every day spiritual food. So you have to read at least one chapter of the Bible, and maybe according to your canon with your spirit, one chapter of the Bible a day will keep keeps the devil away. A chapter of the Bible a day will keep the devil away. Has to be this way. Has to be. Has to be. You have to have a relationship with the scriptures. The atheistic Christian is living an unrepented life. The atheistic Christian is living an unrepented life. That's why the Catholic epistle today, I'll read you a part and I, will, I won't say any more because the Catholic epistle said it very clearly. It says it very clearly. It says, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of His saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. If you do ungodly deeds, it means you're unrepentant, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. And then he goes on to elaborate. Who are these people? They are the, the grumblers, the complainers, walking according to their own lusts, of their own mouth, great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, O oh, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. You have to live a repentant life. Hopefully we're not in this, this category. People who are sensual persons, who are causing divisions. It's not good. Not good. This is not the, the true Christian. These are atheistic Christians. Number four or five. The, another characteristic, last characteristic of atheistic Christians is they are not interested in being part of the body of Christ. They have no interest in the participation in the church. No interest in service. If you ask this person, can you do this for the church? Let's say, not for me. No, can you, would you like to attend? No. No interest in being part of the body of Christ. A real Christian would want to have fellowship with other believers, will want to worship, will want to fast. We're coming up on the fast. The true Christian enjoys giving this sacrifice of fasting. The last type of person who followed the Lord, we said the first type was the one who was looking for like in the physical or temporal benefit. The second is the atheistic Christian. The third person is the one who followed the Lord, but actually rejected the Lord. Actually, there was a percentage of people that followed the and they said, mm, we don't, know. this stuff is all hocus pocus. We don't need to follow this. I would call them, these are the, maybe the, the ones who denied the Lord. And in the gospel of today, it's written, 
This is what the Lord Jesus, he accused the people. He said, I am the bread of life who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and guess what? You didn't believe. You've seen all of this, but you didn't believe. These are the last type of people. They saw the Lord with their eyes in front of them. He did wonders and He did everything. But at the end, they said, we don't believe. I was uh, reading a book a while back uh, by a Catholic bishop named uh, Robert Barron. And he talked about some many causes of why people might say or might not believe. And I wanted to share with you very quickly some of maybe the reasons that are so prevalent in our society now. One of the reasons is, is that many people believe that religion and all this talk that we're having is for like dumb people. Like if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are stupid. And like I, and if you don't believe me, go to your, like I, if the, the kids understand this, they go to their school. If they say we believe in Jesus Christ, they will be made fun of and people will tell them no. Like, what, you still, are you, you really believe in these fairy tales? Like Jonah? <laughs> Jonah was in, in the belly of a what You really believe in this? You believe in a flood? You believe, this is all like fairy tale stuff. Don't, and they deny and don't believe. Don't let anyone ridicule your, your faith and think that many brilliant people believed in our faith. And even St. Peter said, we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses to His majesty. So even St. Peter says, no, these aren't fairy tales. This isn't hocus pocus. No, this is real stuff. We saw it with our eyes. The other thing that I think is very prevalent today among society, society is the idea that if science doesn't prove the existence of God, then we shouldn't like, believe it. And, like, I want to see the experiment that proves that God exists. And this is a big, like, fallacy. Why do you want to see the God who created science and you want to use science to see God? It's not going to work. And God doesn't fit into a test tube. But there's many other ways to logically or to see Christ in a very clear way through history, through literature, through pro poetry. Another one that I think is very dangerous now is tolerism and pluralism. And many reasons why people deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And they, they don't believe in absolute truth. And they say, what is truth? And even like Pontius Pilate, when the Lord said, those who hear my voice, hear the voice of truth, he said, what is truth? And then he crucified him. So there's many people who deny truth. And they claim, like when you say the Lord is the only way, they'll say... So exclusive. It's so exclusive. Why not? There's many ways and many good people in the world and all this. But this is denying the Lord. This is denying what he said. I was just in Georgia a few weeks ago and I met a lady at a, at a FedEx store and she saw me and she started saying, What are you? And then we said, and I told her I'm a priest and talked to her and all this stuff. Then she told me um, about her son who converted to, to Islam. And then I was like, okay. And then her son who converted to Islam married a Jew. And then in their crib, like in their, their child play area, they put a big picture of Jesus. And I'm like, and she's, and she's telling me, isn't that great? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I, that's, that's, that's so confusing. <laughs> How is that great? Like, you have a, your son's Islamic, your daughter, your mom's Jewish, and, and you have a picture of Jesus. Like, where, how is that? Like, wh but that's the society. That's, oh, it's all great. It's all this denying the Lord. Denying the Lord. The last thing is, and I thought this was uh, another thing that we're suffering from now, is called uh, voluntarism. The idea that like, whatever you believe is okay, and whatever, like, objective truth is, doesn't matter. This is the one where if I believe I am a prince of Arabia, then I must be a prince, and no one can tell me otherwise. 
or if I feel that I have a different sex, it's my feelings that governs like what should be, it's my truth, and so whatever you believe out there doesn't matter. But no, that, so these four things, these four things I think we should be very cautious of, and this is pushing us into a realm of denying truth and denying God. People who believe religion is stupid, the people who believe that in the, like, the, that science is supreme, the people that uh, in the name of tolerance and pluralism accept everything, and the idea that voluntarism is the idea that I can believe whatever I want to believe and you can believe whatever and whatever I believe is fine to you. So these are the four ideological ideas that are floating that we need to be on guard of. The idea of today is to, be, to have self-diagnosis. We want to diagnose ourselves and understand what are the reasons why I follow God. What type of believer are you? Are you the one following the Lord because of material and physical things? Or do you have a real relationship with the Savior? Or are you the Christian atheist that comes to church and is doing all the things, but actually doesn't, hasn't changed you? In the Pauline epistle today, it said, at the end of the Pauline epistle today, it said, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. The word that they heard, it didn't profit them. They heard the words and the Christian atheist. It's the Christian. They heard the words, didn't profit them. My prayer today is that we do what is written in the Pauline epistle, is that today, if you will hear the voice, do not harden your hearts in rebellion. You need to put down the weapons of disobedience. And let's stop the rebellion in our hearts. And we really need to re rededicate our lives to become true believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Oh,